looking in. I mean, it's dangerous. And I'd like to see Trump come out and criticize this war power authorization that's open-ended everywhere in the world. Because the one thing he says that bothers me is he goes, I'm really militaristic, but I don't want war with Russia and we shouldn't be in Syria. He says the right thing's there, but then says, but don't worry, I'm militaristic when we need to be. Well, so is Thomas Jefferson. So maybe, uh, maybe I get where he's going with that. But going back to Pastor Manning and your calls for 20 minutes into the next hour for folks that are holding... Uh, what do you expect Obama to do finishing up with that? And then and then Hillary, doesn't this show the arrogance of the system pushing Hillary, uh, who is who is so loathed across the board? I mean, that even a, a kook like Bernie Sanders could be beating her in many polls. And, and so where do you see that going? Actually, I, I think that Hillary has got some major health issues, Alex. Uh, I know that Bill has some major health issues. If you just look at him how much he has slowed down, how frail he looks. Uh, as he much looks as like he, Steve Jobs before he almost died. Yeah, he, he, he's awful. And Hillary, though she hasn't had gone through a major weight loss, uh, she is, uh, she's not thinking clearly. She's not spontaneous. Uh, she's not quick-witted. Uh, not that she really ever was, but I, I, you know, I, I think she's got some major health problems. And Bernie Sanders, uh, Alex, has tapped into young people who are unchurched. They, uh, they graduated from liberal high schools and colleges where our government and constitution was not heralded as the paradigm for the world. We, we've got a gap. We've got a patriot gap. We've got a loyalty gap. We've got a belief system gap that these young people were raised up in. However, Bernie, on the other hand, was a part of the tail end of the Bolshevik, Trotskyites, Russia, the communist Marxist movement. He's a leftover time bomb from the Cold War. He is basically, that's, in that's my a view, a communist saying. agent. Yeah. That's a great way of saying it. And so that's why he's, that's why he's resonating. And that's why the, the young people that don't know God, that don't know our nation, have been taught to hate our nation in schools, are resonating with Bernie Sanders. That's what's going on in that event. I tell you, I mean, they've already suckered them. The big money wants socialism because it domesticates people, and these young people are so sad. They have no idea that NAFTA and GATT sold out their jobs. Now they're getting two, three degrees, and then there's no job for them. And, then, and, yeah. and, then, and now they want Bernie to give them everything free. Where do they think it comes from? Well, I, I think that, you know, their, their parents are still around. They still believe that the Wall Street structure is still pretty powerful. Uh, and they're not really, they don't have to get out and earn a living for themselves as of yet. So they have not become con made, concerned. And they think that the wealth that's out there that their parents have should be shared with the people who have made no efforts to do anything or take advantage. And they don't know that their parents who work for it invested the wealth that's been stolen with the derivatives and the whole house of cards is coming down and they want tyranny in place when it all goes down. Right. It's a sick, it's a sick system. And it's going to take a lot to undo this. I mean, we're nearly twenty-one billion trillion dollars uh, in debt. That's right. I Stay there, Pastor. Back in seventy seconds. Atla.org. A T L A H. Pastor David Manning. Stay with us, folks. I'm not going to belabor this. I want to go right to your phone calls. Pastor David Manning's our guest. I'm Alex Jones. If you just tuned in, Infowars.com. You know, there's all these great stations out there. New listeners tune in every second, so it's important to reintroduce the show. I'm a libertarian Christian. I believe in treating people like I want to be treated. I've studied the elites we have. They have picked up a science called eugenics, which is basically just pure Satanism. And they are really doing bad stuff. And they, they want to be God. And I realize that there's nowhere to run in this future if we don't fight them. And it doesn't matter, even if it's the Antichrist and all this beast system comes to the fore. I've got to resist it or I'm working with it. And, and let me explain something. I don't need to intellectually know that. I feel it spiritually because I have to even fight not joining it through fear, through passion, through lust. I'm wicked. I can think like they do. I can get into these mindsets. I can channel that energy. And uh, let me tell you, it's bad news. And the world is just given into it by peer pressure. So I just want to say this before we go to calls with Pastor Manning and get his take on it. You can't make a deal with this, folks, and the only safety is in resisting it. The only safety is in that. For those of you that are intimidated by this evil and just keep your heads down and go, hey, I know you're right, but I'm staying out of it, you're already in it. 
If you choose not to fight this, you've already chosen. There is nobody in the stands on this one. You're on the field. Pastor Manning, do you agree with that statement? No demilitarized zone is the word, Alex. You're absolutely right. But I think that where maybe a large number of people are is that they just don't have the personal fortitude to stand up and choose to fight. Uh, and so they make the wrong choice. It isn't easy to stand up. I heard you say at the top of the, uh, your broadcast an hour ago that you're in this even if it costs you your life or if you get arrested. Uh, people can't say that. They don't have their strength. Now, they should be able to, but they haven't seen this nation in such a way as that they're willing to go to jail and not be able to call an attorney. They're willing to die uh, for what they believe is right and just for this nation. The people haven't arrived at that point yet, and I, I, uh, that's just where that's at. You're absolutely right, and, and it's because of that attitude we lose. They should be afraid of it coming into full power. They should get that it's not selfless and great to fight this. If you really study history, it's all we can do. I mean, uh, they've lied to themselves. Yeah, I, I think that they believe that somehow or another uh, it's not going to come near them. It's going to, they'll put up with some uh, inconveniences here and there, but it's not as drastic as perhaps it could be. And maybe if they just, stick their heads in the sand, it'll pass them over. Nothing could be further from the truth, but that's how they feel about well, it. Well, that's it. We're going to break. I promise we're going to right back with Sean, Matt, Brandon, Scott, Craig, and others for the final segment with Pastor Manning. Pastor Manning, as we go to break there, I want to ask you this in this one minute. People think they're going to be passed over by this system. What they need to get is it's all the preparation, the digging in, the webs being woven. All the evil we see now is just the preparation for this what's coming. And that's what you can feel in your gut, your spirit. You can see it, too. I, I mean, your take on what I just said. Uh, it, this is not uncommon. It happened in Nazi Germany. It, it happened in Rome. It, it happened with the Greek islands. It, 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 it happened here in America. Only 17% of the people in America during the time of the revolution felt there was a need. They felt that they could just get along with King George. And so this is not uncommon. Humanity has not advanced to the point where people are now awake because of what they're eating or drinking, and they recognize we got to stand toe to toe against the system. I mean, it just it it is just perpetrates itself. But the thing that is consistent, Alex, is that the minority group that does take a stand always wins. They never lose. Never. You're absolutely right. It's an incredible time to be alive, folks. I mean, get yourself right with God. And, and folks know I'm not a preacher, but the more this evil presents itself, the more I just run up underneath God's wing. Because I just, whew, that's the only way I can do this. And just keep praying for us. We're praying for you as well. We'll be right back with your phone calls with Pastor David Manning. Stay with us. All right, coming up after Pastor Manning leaves us, I'm going to play uh, the first place winner from the Make Fun of Hillary contest. I'm going to get to more of the uh, clips from the X-Files that is just basically classic Alex Jones just to show the success we're having getting the word out. Thanks to all your support and spreading the word out there. We'll continue with phone calls and hit a bunch of news. El Salvador urges women not to get pregnant till 2018 to combat spread of Zika virus. Isn't that convenient? All these new little loving viruses. Be sure and take all your shots. Brazil had the lowest, one of the lowest breast cancer rates in the world, but now since they accepted glyphosate a decade ago, it's exploded. Oh, uh, oh, but the big companies love us. Everything's fine. Let's go to phone calls here for Pastor James David Manning. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to, who's up first here? Uh, let's go ahead and go to Matt in Ohio. Matt, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Hey, thanks for uh, having me. I just wanted to check in with you guys. Uh, Alex, uh, for whatever it's worth, uh, I'm a longtime listener and first-time caller. I'm going back to my buddies making VHS tapes of your, uh, of your show in Austin. I just wanted to send a little bit of health and strength to you guys for your day. Um, I'm a longtime musician, artist, educator in the field of popular culture. I just wanted to say it's great because you guys are giving uh, a representation of a term that I've developed called cultural unification. And I think that this is just such a great vision of it, and it's a great counterattack for every attack that 
either you face Alex or Pastor Manning faces because it's all about, you know, this whole divide and conquer, which you guys often uh, uh, talk about uh, quite a bit. Uh, in exactly. Instead of fighting over, uh, you know, race or where you're from or all these side issues, which they bring in to exacerbate, there are real issues there. We are unified in are you for the God of this world? Or are you for the God of life? I mean, it really does come down to that. That's why they're always attacking real Christians. Not that the churches haven't been taken over and aren't run, most of them. It's, it's still that idea could stop them because we are brothers together and sisters in our ideas of love and liberty. And, and, and I think that's what you're getting at and that we don't want to be spied on. And we want fair taxes and, and we want sovereignty and we want to be treated good. And, 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 and we don't want to be told our kids belong to the state. Pastor Manning? Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. All those things ditto goes right there. But I'm amazed that the Ohio listener, Matt, has been listening to you from the VHS days. That's a long time. That is long-standing loyalty. My hat's off to you, Matt. <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, I got used to, we were just on a few radio stations, but I made films that, you know, a couple a year, they would go out on VHS tapes. People make copies of them. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, God, uh, God bless you, uh, Matt. Good to hear from you. Uh, let's go ahead uh, and talk to Sean in Texas. You're on the air with Pastor Manning. Go ahead. Gentlemen, how are y'all today? Good, uh, Just fine, Sean. It's uh, such a privilege to be speaking with you, Alex, especially a, uh, a modern-day George Washington is what I uh, Enough say. about me. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, the show's having success. It's dangerous, but we're, I'm no George Washington. Go ahead, though. <laughs> well, to some of us, you are. Uh, just a few quick points. Um, you know, I think you guys are right on just about everything you've discussed. My, you know, it's funny, you just brought up divide and conquer, and one of the things that uh, this is going to sound like something that's more uh, divisional than bringing people together, but my biggest issue is, you know, when you start to discuss radical Islam or radical Muslims and the people that are carrying out some of these horrific events, you know, my perspective is these people aren't even really human. They're more like animals. And how, even if things hypothetically get under control, these these individuals cannot be assimilated into our society. There's no, there's just really really no room for them. So I guess my question to you guys is, you know, if if, if and when we take the constitution and the government back and, and impose the rule of law that we've lost over the last few decades, uh, what do we do with these people? Pastor Manning, I appreciate your call. That's a really good question. Let me just briefly say something on proviso and then move forward. You got to be careful when you start saying people aren't acting like humans. Uh, because that's how you dehumanize people. In the Middle East, they've dehumanized women that way uh, in, in many areas. And, and we do the Muslims a favor when we say radical Muslims. They say, oh, you mean all Muslims. Well, okay, if you want us to say that, we will. The point is, is the people they're bringing in are people that have overthrown the non-radical Muslim countries. Our government's behind that, and they're coming here, and they know it's not going to mix, uh, and they know it doesn't fly, and they know it doesn't work, and they hope we then respond in a totalitarian way and get rid of our own values in a response to these people. And in that process, we get dehumanized and brought down to that level. Now, that said, you got to shut them off. You got to kick them out. But you've got to treat them uh, kindly and nicely and not let the globalists destabilize their country to begin with. Pastor? Sean, I, I, you know, down in Texas, I don't want to seem churchy or, you know, all spiritual and Pentecostal, that kind of thing. But the blood of Jesus is able the blood of Jesus is able to wash anybody from a mindset that's incompatible with his word or the rest of humanity and bring them in and welcome them in. And that's the weapon that we will use, the blood of Jesus preaching the word of Almighty God. I know that's a little bit preachy, but that is indeed an answer. Well, that's why the enemy does everything they can to make sure the real gospel is not taught. Absolutely. And promoting people that promoting this feel-good gospel has nothing to do with Jesus. Oh, the feel-good gospel is total witchcraft, voodoo, name it and claim it. It's total CIA on record with that. The real gospel, folks, it works. It's, it's spiritual. It's electric. It frees people. It's real. They open that door, boom, they start changing. And that's what the spirit of this world is scared of. Absolutely. The problem is, is they won't let us proselytize to Muslims. And under political correctness, we're not supposed to either in this country. Yeah, that's the other problem. Yeah, we got we got we got to focus. We got to put the word of God back center uh, and focus on that. That people will know that that's the way. And I I I I know that Muslims are looking for a way and they're looking for an answer. That's why you know, listen, they they believe in Father Abraham, which means that their minds are open to Jesus. 
They just need to be taught it. And we need to demonstrate as Christians that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And once they see that in us, 